This is the Logitech G923. It features an updated force feedback mechanism they call True Force, dual clutch technology, an updated brake pedal, and a few cosmetic changes among other small things. But at $400, it's not what I expected. Today I'll be reviewing and giving you all my honest thoughts on this wheel, and no, this video is not sponsored by Logitech, I actually went out and paid $423 for it after tax. If you're interested, links to this product are in the video description, along with an unboxing video I made of it. As I usually do with all my reviews, I'll start off with its positives, move on to its negatives, and end off with my final thoughts and recommendations. And if you just want to skip around, timestamps are in the video description. Let's start off with what I believe is this product's main and significant improvement, the pedals. Although they look exactly like the previous generations, the brake pedal features a new spring, which seriously changes the feel of the main game. When braking, the resistance feels progressively heavier when pushing it down. Unlike the previous model, which was extremely stiff, this one is surprisingly similar to my higher-end load cell pedal set. Throughout the many hours I spent playing with them, I adjusted to them quickly, and although they obviously didn't feel as good as my $200 load cell pedals, they allowed me to remain consistent and confident on track, something which I never felt with the original pedals even after 6 months of playing with them. The pedals in general, although made primarily of plastic, remain rigid and from my experience had no flex even when applying maximum force. If you're planning on using these on carpet, the pedal set features an extendable carpet grip which will prevent them from moving around much although I'd still recommend placing a heavy object behind them. Before we continue, I should mention that the G923 technically has two variation. One works with Xbox and PC, and the other one works with PlayStation and PC. The only difference between them is seen at the bottom of the button plate where the Xbox One has the Xbox logo and the PlayStation One has the three small buttons. They are completely identical in all other regards however. Now let's talk about what I like regarding the wheel itself. The G923 features what Logitech calls True Force, which I'll try to explain in the most simple way possible. Basically, the wheel recognizes audio frequencies from the game and transmits those to the wheel by making it vibrate accordingly. If you don't really know what I mean, just imagine a butt kicker, but on the wheel. While it by no means makes you faster nor gives you a competitive advantage, it adds a neat sensation and slightly adds to the immersion. I would love to see this type of technology implemented in other future sim racing wheels. The G923 also comes with a dual clutch software that allows you to control the clutch by point when launching the car, thus limiting wheel spin and giving you a quicker start. The wheel features the same high quality leather as before which always feels nice to hold on to and has a slightly modernized look to it with its blacked out accents. Finally, it feels natural to hold on to and the paddles and buttons have always been at close reach. If you plan to use this wheel on a desk, they have table clamps which hold the wheel in place tightly. Also underneath the wheel you see where everything plugs in. The power cable, pedals, and optional shifter all connect here and are wired through these cable management indents. Unfortunately this wraps up the positives for this wheel, or at least the ones I can think of at this very moment. Now let's move on to the negatives. Logitech themselves claim that the Logitech G design is re-engineered to down tier game physics delivering unprecedented realism. Unprecedented realism? I beg to differ. Now before I go on, you need to realize that this is a $400 wheel. Unlike the previous G29 and G920, which were being sold at $250, the price point of the G923 makes it very much a mid-entry product, which at this price point competes against Thrustmaster's belt-driven wheels. And the force feedback leaves a lot to be desired. So much so that when I first started driving around in a Sato Corsa Expedizione, I could have sworn that the force feedback was at like 50%, and when I went to play around with it in the settings, to my surprise, it was maxed out. Even after changing everything possible to exert the maximum force out of this wheel, I could still fling it around with one finger without a problem. Simply put, at $400 I expected a significant improvement in the force feedback, which I personally do not believe is here. I will point out that this wheel did seem to react a little bit quicker compared to the previous model, which is great for those who are into drifting. The True Force technology I said good things about earlier is cool, don't get me wrong, but it's not compatible with many titles. The only titles currently compatible, as listed directly on the Logitech website, are the following. Assetto Corsa Competizione, Automobilista 2, Great 2019, Monster Truck Championship, Project Cars 3, SnowRunner, and iRacing. It sounds like a decent handful, but let's talk about it real quick. If we're all being honest here, the only notable titles are ACC, Automobilista 2, and iRacing. Even then, is there anyone out there who's paying iRacing's hefty monthly fees only to play with the Logitech wheel? 
In essence, the True Force technology, which has been heavily marketed as this wheels big thing, just doesn't have much compatibility. Some of the most popular games like Assetto Corsa, Dirt Rally 2, and the F1 titles to name a few all don't support it, at least not at the time of this recording. I previously mentioned the dual clutch software integrated in the G923. While it's nice to have and could be useful to some, I'm surprised that the one game I could see this being most helpful in, the F1 titles aren't compatible with it. Furthermore, the dual clutch software is also not compatible with a handful of other titles listed on Logitech's website. The previous G29 and G920 were notoriously loud wheels. The mortar driven force feedback would clunk around and constantly annoy everyone around you. And surprisingly, if anything, the G923 manages to be even louder than those. Not only do the same motors still clunk around, but because the true force system inside the wheel acts as a transducer, you can literally hear the game from the wheelbase itself. It's a little hard to explain, so just take a listen. To top everything off, the one thing I would have sworn Logitech would have updated are at least the buttons, rotary dial, and d-pad on the wheel itself. Yet, they remain exactly the same as they were 5 years ago. The rotary dial is floppy and very inaccurate, as many times moving the dial one click would register as two or not register at all. The d-pad remains looking cheap and takes away from the look of the wheel, and the smaller L3 and R3 buttons are still as delicate as ever before. Considering this is a $400 wheel, they could have at a minimum addressed some of those issues. At least that's what I think. As for my final thoughts, I'll keep this concise and to the point. The Logitech G923 is an upgrade from the previous G29 and G920, and yeah, it's better than those wheels. However, in my opinion, the upgrades made to it are not enough to justify its $400 price tag, when the previous models, which are still not discontinued by the way, are still providing a very similar experience in terms of force feedback, ergonomics, etc. for only $250. Furthermore, the true force and dual clutch technology of the G923, which are the main selling points of it, are only compatible with a handful of games, at least at this very moment. The biggest significant upgrade in my opinion is on the pedals. They felt a lot better than I expected, and as I already mentioned, they seem to very closely mimic the feel of my $200 load cell pedals. Honestly, if Logitech decided to sell these separately for around $100, I would reckon they would become a very popular option among low budget rigs. Anyways, this has been my honest review on the Logitech G923, a wheel and pedal set which were just not what I expected. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Are you considering the G923 or will you stick with the older versions? As always, thank you all for watching, stay safe, and have a fantastic rest of your day.